Um, I'd like to give you guys a free resource sheet and I'm going to show you all of the different foods that I talk about in this video. Um, but I really would like to do the same thing as we did last time. I want you to share with me your aha moment. What was something that you didn't realize so that I can figure out, you know, what really resonated with you and how have I added value to your life? So let's get started with the top 10 cheap superfoods. So this is how to eat healthy on a budget. I don't want people to think that eating healthy has to be expensive or hard because it absolutely doesn't. Everything I do is all about simplicity. How can I make it easier, cheaper, more accessible for you guys? So the first one I'm going to start with, and this is a carbohydrate. So I want to sort of give you an idea of what macronutrient I'm talking about before I talk about it is rice, raw rice. That was a little bit harder to say than I thought. Then that's going to be the cheapest way to do it. 14 cents per 100 grams. This is in Australian dollars from Woolies. So if you, you know, anywhere you go, rice is really cheap. Now, the reason I love rice so much is because rice is a resistant starch. So I like the fact that it's gluten free. I don't find that people do well on gluten in general or a lot of gluten doesn't seem to be beneficial for most people. It's shown in even for people who don't have um, like they're not celiac and they're not gluten sensitive, it's still found to increase the levels of zonulin, um, which basically means it sort of gives them a temporary leaky gut. Um, if you don't know what leaky gut is, I've actually done a short video on that. So if you have a little look through of my previous videos, you'll find out what leaky gut syndrome is. So gluten actually does that for you really sort of, it's a temporary leaky gut, but nonetheless studies have actually shown that. And I'll find that study and I'll pop it in the, in the links below because I, I love sharing evidence-based um, medicine with you guys. So if you're having rice, because it's a resistant starch, that's really important because then you're going to have fiber. Fiber is so important. So just in a nutshell, to not get too far into the gut, you need to understand that we are kind of living like team members with our gut microbiome. So if you imagine that our gut bacteria are a whole bunch of soldiers, then we are the host they live on us, but really we're, in, we're a team. So whatever we can't digest, they will digest for us. And then they create little chemicals out of that, which gives back to us. So it's kind of like this um, team, you know, tag team between us and our gut bacteria, or you could call that our microbiome. So we really like to make sure that we're feeding them. Now, rice is a fantastic resistant starch that is cheap, gluten-free, highly accessible and is really a good food for your gut bacteria. So they absolutely love to eat rice. Um, and the great thing about rice is that not only, like I said, is it cheap, gluten free and all that sort of stuff, but if you cook rice and then you cool it, so let's say you meal prep for two or three days, you had one for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday. On Monday, you might've eaten it hot. On Tuesday and Wednesday, you left it in the fridge to heat up again. Well, actually the resistant starch actually increases when you cool foods that already have resistant starch in them and then you heat them back up again. Here is a little a tip for vegans. It's really important that you realize that you're not gonna be having um, not only a lot of protein in your diet, you can, but it's just, you really need to be planning it, but typically you wouldn't. Um, but also you're not having complete amino acid profiles throughout your day. And so what I mean by that is when you eat a piece of steak, that has every essential amino acid that your body needs. Essential meaning we must get it from our diet. So it's already got that in a little package for you that's done and dusted. If you're a vegan and you'd say you only ate rice and you ate no other, you know, beans or lentils or whatever, uh, no other sources of incomplete proteins, then you would never make up the full complete proteins. So when you layer a incomplete protein and another incomplete protein, then you actually end up getting the full amino acid profile. So that's why I was going to mention it's important that you have something like lentils. Lentils I love because they are so high in protein for a legume. Um, so matching those two and like marrying those two up will give you a, a complete amino acid profile. And also I just eat lentils canned. I don't have time to cook them. I'm busy. So I sort of given a little bit of a vegan option for protein source, even though I mentioned it was a carbohydrate primarily and rice is, but you can also use it if you're adding lentils as a, a complete source of protein. It's not going to be super high in protein, but at least it's going to give you the complete amino acid profile of all the essential amino acids that you need. The second one is lean turkey mince. Now for a protein, lean turkey mince is my favorite and I'll tell you why. If you look at all the other different minces, they're all equally as good, 
But if you're going to pay for, for meat, mince is easily digestible because it's already chopped up into little, little squishy bits. And it just naturally is quite high in protein. M most people don't realize this. Um, so like your bang for buck, if you're looking at turkey or chicken, turkey actually has a higher um, protein level than chicken. If you're looking at it like, you know, pound for pound. Um, or you compare, <laughs> compare it pound. Pound. Who says pound in Australia? Um, if you're in the UK, you'd appreciate that. Um, yeah, so, so the reason that I love um, lean turkey mince is because instead of you getting your fat from an animal and you don't know what kind of life that it lived, remember toxins live in fat stores, then you don't really know what kind of a fat you're getting. You could get fats with loads of toxins in them. So I would rather you actually choose and, and consciously add your fat sources as opposed to buying fatty sources of meat. Number three is frozen mixed veg now this is just so easy because you can boil it you can steam it you could pan fry it if you wanted to it's there's so many different flavors that you can add to veggies and they're so versatile the beauty of it is that you've got they're really cheap so you don't have to like buy fresh vegetables although i love fresh vegetables but if you're looking at you know eating on a budget then the best way to get your vegetables because vegetables are so 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 important you just buy them frozen now every time you go to the grocery store buy a different mixed bag of veg don't just buy just one straight vegetable get a mixture of different ones in because that's going to give you a mixture of different micronutrients i don't mind that they're not fresh because you're still they're, they're basically fresh and then they're snap frozen so they're frozen pretty much straight away so you're going to actually retain a lot of the nutrients things that die off over time things that die off when they're exposed to heat or die off when they're exposed to oxygen and so unfortunately unless you're you're shopping at a farmer's market which you know only if you were um you know you had some money to spend would you actually go and shop at a farmer's market would you end up with the, the the maximum freshness and maximum micronutrients that you would want in your vegetables so as they're sitting there at the supermarket you know they're just sitting there for days and days and days and days and days so the nutrient profile of them is probably lowering day by day but when you pick it up you have no idea how long it's been there for so you're kind of taking a chance with that whereas with frozen vegetables you can pretty much be assured that they were picked and frozen straight away and they're frozen until you cook them. So I kind of like that, especially if you're on a budget. And vegetables, more vegetables is always better. Um, the next one, number four is mixed nuts. So like I said before, I like you having lean turkey mints because I don't like you eating fatty cuts of meat because you don't know what's in that fat. So when you're going to add fats, do it intentionally. And that's why I say have something like mixed nuts. Nuts are such a good source of so many different micronutrients. They are primarily a fat. Mixed nuts is really fantastic because you're getting, again, a mixture of cashews, which are an amazing source of resistant starch, really good for our gut bacteria. Something like a walnut, which is really high in omega-3 fatty acids, which helps to lower inflammation. Almonds, which is like really lean, low in calories and high in protein. Tastes delicious on no matter what you put it on. Um, macadamias for that really nice, like fatty, um, beautiful taste, but also that, that, that really nice, like good fats as well. So when you're picking um, mixed nuts, as long as they're raw and unsalted, not only are they going to be cheaper, um, but they're going to be most beneficial to you because they have a wide array of different micronutrients in there. So you kind of, you know, you, you've got this like buffet to choose from. And then your gut bugs will really appreciate that. Because if you've ever heard me talk about gut bugs, I always say they're like an army and if you imagine each army member or each soldier likes a different type of food so you have to kind of try and please everyone don't just pick a few soldiers favorites and just keep feeding them that same food you've got to give them a big variety of food to choose from so that all of your soldiers are strong so that your army together as one whole is really strong and obviously that one whole army is a reflection of your gut microbiome so like, what does the team look like is the whole team strong or is just a few of them strong and the rest of them are weak because that's where you can get gut dysbiosis so if you were to pick one nut, I would say pick cashews, unless obviously you're allergic to them. And if you were to pick one seed, I think the best bang for your buck would be flaxseed. Now, when it comes to flaxseed, it's actually better for you to grind flaxseeds, also called linseeds, also known as linseeds. It's best for you to grind them on the spot. So you could go to Kmart, buy a $10 grinder. Literally, this is what I have, a coffee grinder. I don't even use it for coffee. I just use it for my linseeds or my flaxseeds. Um, and, and do that so you grind that for like say a three or four day period and every three or four days you just grind another batch and you just use that over a few days because 
if you're buying them already as a flax meal, um, you know, like LSA and things like that, that are already pre-packaged, they're already all grinded up, then they're already oxidized. Those, those acids, those fatty acids have already started to oxidize. And so you're putting that oxidization into your body and that's going to create, um, you know, issues for you, like free radicals and things like that, which would require more antioxidants in order for you to combat yada, yada, yada. So I know it sort of sounds like a, it does sounds like a little bit of work, but literally if you put a, a tablespoon of flax seeds into a coffee grinder, it'll literally take you like 10 seconds max. And then you have that, you know, to add to your smoothies, to add to your porridge, to add to anything um, that you want to add that to, you know, like a dessert or something like that, that you've made from lovely whole foods. The next one, again, a carb is seasonal fruit. This is like the best hack I think I could ever give you guys. Seasonal fruit, not only again, is it packed with fiber, different beautiful nutrients and micronutrients like minerals and things like that and different vitamins. But if you're eating them seasonally, then you're going to be buying the cheapest ones at the time. If you're able to grow a lot of apples, then you're going to have a surplus of apples at your grocery store or at your market or wherever you shop to get your fresh fruit and veg. So they're going to need to put the price down because they have lots of it. This is the laws of supply and demand so if you can just buy the ones that are cheaper they're actually also probably in season and so that also gives you the added benefit that they're not imported from really far away again the longer that they travel the longer they're exposed to oxygen or heat or whatever the less nutrient profile they have in them so you really want to try and maximize seasonal fruits because they're going to be cheaper which is like the ultimate hack but they're actually also going to have more nutrients in them because they haven't traveled as far you can't guarantee that but you have a better chance of them being in a local area more nutrient dense for those reasons that i mentioned before the next one okay this is this is a hard sell it's not the sexiest protein source um but if you can find a way to make it taste good it's such a bang for your buck and this is organ meats and i especially like liver because i find that it's so so cheap again this is just like with i just put my tight ass hat on and i was like how can i find foods that are the absolute minimum 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 in comparison to you know similar foods that give you guys the most nutrients that you could possibly get from a small um, investment so i love chicken liver and you can actually find organic chicken liver and it's still cheaper than like your normal chicken fillet so that's why i love that so much and because it's their liver as well your liver actually holds onto a lot of nutrients so that's really nutrient dense again sometimes it's hard to get that flavor right i always like to mix chicken liver um, with bacon i find that's a really nice taste together although i don't like to use too much bacon if i could just use a little bit of bacon and then kind of marinate that in the sort of bacony flavor then i find that that's an easy way to eat it um otherwise if you're not into bacon and you know you've got to be aware of the fact that that um deli meats have you know cancer risks with them if you if you over consume on those um then something like you know a different kind of mince might be nice or just any kind of seasoning to sort of drown out that flavor if you don't really like it now we're up to number seven so number seven is fish now fish is expensive so what I like to suggest to people, because people tend to love to buy canned tuna, is I would rather you pick salmon over tuna. It's only like maybe 50 cents difference, but for every can of salmon that you're having, I, I would know that you would be getting more omega-3 fatty acids and less potential mercury. Tuna is a big fish. It's really high in mercury because the bigger the fish is, the more little fish that it eats, which means if all of those little fish have small levels of mercury, by the time it gets into the big fish, it's still got decently high levels of mercury. So I would rather you eat a smaller fish like salmon. Have it canned, it doesn't really matter. You're still gonna get the benefits of the actual um, salmon itself, and that's still gonna give you some, fa some omega-3 fatty acids, which is really important for inflammation. 99% of us walking around are highly inflamed. Um, if you don't like eating fish, I highly suggest that you buy a fish oil. Now this would be a proper fish oil, and sometimes it costs a little bit upfront, but because you're using it over such a long period of time, it actually works out to be quite cheap. So a really good quality fish oil in my mind, over the counter in Australia would be something like Ethical Nutrients. Um, if you have a practitioner, ask for something like Metagenics, Designs for Health, 
Bioceuticals, Orthoplex, something like that. Um, I super like Designs for Health, the Omega Veil that they've got at the moment. I don't normally suggest specific supplements to people. That's not usually my vibe. But I love this one because not only does it have really high quality fish oil, it also has lipase, which is the, the enzyme that you need in order to break down that fat, which I find, you know, people have fish oil tablets and that it tends to give them reflux. So that can be really tricky with people who aren't already good at breaking fat down. How do you know if you're good at breaking fat down? Chances are you've probably got a little bit of stubborn fat on you that sort of won't go away. And that can sometimes be an indicator that you're not so good at breaking fats down. Because if, if your body's not good at breaking fats down, it's also not good at breaking endogenous fat down, which is like your fat storage. So I hope that makes sense. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments below. I am so open to it. Number eight, olive oil. It's cheap, it's accessible everywhere. Make sure you get extra virgin olive oil. And I also like olive oil because its smoke point is higher than many other oils on the market. It's not that much more expensive. Like nowadays you go into a supermarket, you can get it for like five Australian dollars. That's fairly cheap. So that's a source of fat that I think would be better for you to add than something like eating the fats off different animals if you're gonna have those other animal protein sources. Number nine would be a combination of hemp seeds and soy. I love soy. I like the fact that it's a phytoestrogen. Uh, phytoestrogens basically mean that it's able to modulate your estrogen. If your estrogen's too high, it has the ability to bring it down. If it's too low, it has the ability to bring it up. And this is similar to the flax seeds I was talking about before. There is now as well, I can't remember the brand that does it. You can buy these like different edamame noodles. So you think that you're eating noodles, but actually they're like, they're like these super high protein soy noodles and they are delicious and cheap when you look at it in comparison to how much protein it's giving you as long as you're getting some organic soy it's actually again it's it's not that expensive if you had the money to do it it's only an extra like say dollar or two to get something like tempeh um, because it's fermented again it's good for our gut bacteria we want to be able to focus on that but even if you bought like frozen edamame beans i mean you know that's also high in protein primarily for my vegans but also for everybody else if you were to invest in some seeds i would say hemp seeds would be absolutely the way to go because again they're higher in protein anything that we can do to increase your amount of protein i think is going to be beneficial for you um, it tends to be the most satiating macronutrient as well so it actually helps you not only to you know if you're looking at a calorie equation it actually has the highest thermogenic effect of food which basically means it's creating the most heat it's having the biggest impact on your metabolism overall to kind of speed it up more so than the other two macronutrients and like I said it's really satiating it's really hard to eat a lot of protein um, because once you start to eat it you start to feel oh like quite full and quite content um, and your body tends to get those signals a lot better than if you're just eating mostly carbohydrates and that's where I find it can be really tricky for vegans because they don't know where that off switch is if this is you i feel you i've been vegan before and it was like i feel like i just never stopped eating um which was not good for my pocket let me tell you i know i sort of lumped it in together like hemp seed slash soy but i wanted to put together a little vegan source of protein that i felt um you know was was something else and also i think i think that it's really important to remember that while I'm a real advocate for increasing protein in your diet, because most people do not have enough protein, I don't even know one client that's ever come to me that has had what I feel is sufficient for them. And it's funny because I actually had this conversation with an Airbnb host the other day. He was saying, oh, you know, I don't need protein because I don't have muscle and I don't need muscle, I'm, I'm old. And I thought to myself, well, hold on, hold on a second. You need protein for much more than you think. You need protein and amino acids to help to actually create the hormones that you need in your brain that help to regulate your mood. So that, those are actually the building blocks of the, the neurotransmitters in your brain. So I find protein is really important actually for mental health. Yes, it's great for muscle, of course, but it's really important for mental health. Because I work with so many people um, around, you know, try to improve their mental health and their mindset, that is the reason why I love protein. High protein equals better mental health. And only because I see that in my clients. Okay, so the last one, number 10, and again, this is going back to kind of feeding your good gut bacteria, is sauerkraut. 
Sauerkraut is cheap. You can actually buy it in a can. And as long as the can just says that it's got cabbage, water, and salt, you're sweet. That's all the preservatives that it needs in order to keep it good. And even though an investment of a tub is like, say, six or seven dollars, you're only using like a tablespoon or two tablespoons at a time. And if you watched my previous video on hormones and food, you will know why it's so important to have fermented foods in the first half of your cycle. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that video yet, I highly recommend that you do that. I've had amazing feedback back from that video and you guys have absolutely loved it. I feel like it's been a real game changer for you. So like I said before, if you have anything that really stuck for you, an aha moment where you felt, wow, I didn't know that about that food or I didn't know that that was you know, what you classified as a superfood, then please comment it below. If you have any questions, I love questions too. So also comment those below. And for everybody that comments, I'll just send you as well this beautiful shopping list of all these foods that you can get. I like to throw in a few more ideas and I always like to throw in a few discount codes as well for you guys so that you can live happy, healthier lives. I really hope this video helped and I will see you in the next video.